Welcome to today's video, IGCSE Chemistry Paper 6, Specimen Paper 2020. Question 1. The diagram shows the apparatus used to prepare a dry sample of a gas. The gas is more dense than air. Part A. Complete the boxes to name the apparatus. The left one here is the separating funnel. It is used to put only a specific type of substance. Let's say when you only want to put water from oil and water mixture. This long thin passageway is the delivery tube. It is used to deliver gases produced from the reaction inside the flask. And the delivery tube is connected to the gas jar, something that is used to collect gas. Part B. Identify one mistake in the apparatus. Going back to the main question, it says the gas is more dense than air. This means that the gas collected will sort of sink when releasing air. So the gas jar should be upside down so that the gas can be collected downwards. Part C. Suggest the reason why the gas is passed through concentrated sulfuric acid. One of the uses of concentrated sulfuric acid is as a dehydrating agent. The gas is passed through this so that water or other impurities can be removed and only the wanted gas is collected. Question 2. A student investigated the rate of reaction between excess magnesium and two different dilute acids, X and Y. Two experiments were carried out. Experiment 1. The apparatus was set up as shown in the diagram. We have conical flask here where a reaction occurs and gas is collected here in the measuring cylinder. Using a measuring cylinder, 50 cm cube of dilute acid X was poured into the conical flask. 6.5 grams of magnesium ribbon was added to the conical flask and the bung added. The timer was started and the volume of gas collected in the measuring cylinder was measured every 30 seconds for 3 minutes. Part A. Use the measuring cylinder diagrams to record the volumes of gas collected. For the first column, it's at 0, so it's just 0. Next, it's at 13. Then, 22. This question is simple, just read the readings from the cylinder. In 90 seconds, it's at 30, then 36, then 43, then 49. Experiment 1 was repeated using 50 cm cube of dilute acid Y. Part B. Use the measuring cylinder diagrams to record the volumes of gas collected. Same thing, just look at the readings. 0, 5, 10, 13, 17, 20, and 23. Part C. Plot the results for both experiments on the grid below. For each set of results, draw a smooth line graph. Indicate clearly which line represents experiment 1 and which line ex represents experiment 2. The first thing we should do is to label and scale x and y axis. x axis should be the time in seconds, as this is the independent variable. y axis should be the total volume of gas produced in cm cube, since this is the dependent variable. Time is from 0 to 180 seconds, and we have 6 boxes here, so one box stands for 30 seconds. For the volume, it should be at least from 0 to 49. And we have 6 boxes here. So let's make one box to stand for 10 cm cube, having a range of 0 to 60 cm cube. Now it's time to plot them. Make sure you don't make any mistakes here. Okay, this is how it looks like, and after we connect the dots, it's like this. Finally, we need to show which graph stands for which experiment. This is the complete answer. Part D. State which experiment had the faster rate of reaction and suggest why the rate was faster in this experiment. We can see from the graph that experiment 1 had the faster rate of reaction and this can be due to acid X being a stronger acid or a more concentrated acid. Part E. 
From your graph, did you use the time required to collect 25 cm cube of gas in experiment 1? Show clearly on the graph how you worked out your answer. You first need to see where the graph is at 25 cm cube. I show that it's 72 seconds, so write down 72 seconds and leave evidence on the graph. Part F. The rate of this reaction can be calculated using this formula, volume divided by time taken. For the experiment with the higher rate, calculate the rate of reaction for the first 30 seconds of the reaction. Did use the units. The question said experiment with the higher rate, so it's about experiment 1. Going back to our table for the first 30 seconds, 13 cm cube of gas was produced. So it's 13 divided by 30, which is 0.43. The unit should be cm cubed divided by s, written in this way. Part G. Give one advantage and one disadvantage of using a measuring cylinder to add the acids to the flask. The advantage is that flasks are easy to use and the procedure is quick. The disadvantage is that the measurement will be much more inaccurate when compared to beret or pipette. Part H. Suggest and explain one improvement to this experiment. There are lots of possible answers to this. Well, like I just mentioned, we can use a beret to increase the accuracy of the measurement taken. We can repeat the experiments and take average or just take more frequent readings to draw a more accurate graph. Also, instead of using magnesium strips, we can calculate the mass of magnesium and put them in since the strips may differ in mass from one another. Question 3. Concentrated aqueous sodium chloride was broken down by electricity using the apparatus shown. This is another example of electrolysis. Part A. Suggest a suitable method from which to make the electrodes. Electrodes are often made from platinum or graphite or carbon, so you can write one of them. Part B. Gas A is chlorine. Give a test for chlorine. Tests for gases should be memorized. So since chlorine acts as a bleach, it will bleach the damp blue litmus paper. It won't turn it red, but in white. Part C. Gas B pops when tested with a lighted splint. What is gas B? Which gas pops with a lighted splint? It's hydrogen. Question 4. Solid E was analyzed. E was an aluminum salt. Some of the observations are shown below. The appearance, it is a white crystalline solid, and when it was heated, there were colorless drops of liquid at the top of the tube. Part A. A little of solid E was dissolved in distilled water. The solution was divided into four test tubes and the following tests were carried out. Complete the observations for tests 2 and 3. Test 2. Drops of aqueous sodium hydroxide were added to the first test tube. So the question said that it's an aluminum salt. When you add just few drops of aqueous sodium hydroxide to it, White precipitate will be formed. You need to memorize this test and the result. Then next, when you add excess sodium hydroxide, the white precipitate will be dissolved. Test 3. Drops of aqueous ammonia solution were added to the second test tube. Excess ammonia solution was then added. When you first add drops of ammonia solution to aluminum, again, white precipitate will be formed. But this time, even when excess ammonia solution is added, the precipitate will not dissolve and there will be no change. Okay, then two further tests were carried out. In test 4, dilute hydrochloric acid was added, followed by barium nitrate solution. There was no reaction. In test 5, aqueous sodium hydroxide and aluminum foil were added and was warmed. There was a fervescence, pungent gas given off, and gas turned damp litmus paper blue. Part B. What does test 1 tell you about solid E? 
So back to test 1 where we had colorless drops liquid form at the top of the tube. This is simple. It's because it contained water and it's actually water droplets formed. Part C. Identify the gas given off in test 5. Test 5 is where we had a pungent gas. If they mention the word pungent, there is only one answer for it. It's ammonia. Be careful, it's not ammonium, but just ammonia. Part D. What conclusions can you draw about solid E? First of all, you can say that it is hydrated salt, just like I mentioned in Part B. Then from test 5, when ammonia gas is produced from adding sodium hydroxide and aluminum foil, we can conclude that it contains nitrate. Therefore, that can be our answer. You have one more option to write. From test 4, they added hydrochloric acid and barium nitrate solution. This can mean that it does not contain sulfate because if it did, then a white precipitate will be formed but here, there was no reaction. Part E. Test 5 states that the mixture should be warmed carefully. In terms of safety, explain why it is necessary to warm carefully. Well, we are adding sodium hydroxide and they are known for being hazardous. So that's one reason. Also, this reaction is highly exothermic and it can cause the mixture to speed its content. Question 5. E numbers identify chemicals which are added to foods. Part A. E210 is a benzoic acid. How could you show that the solution of benzoic acid is a weak acid? Benzoic acid sounds like some complex molecule but just focus on it being a weak acid. You usually test it using a universal indicator or pH paper. So you'll either get pH ranging from 4 to 6 or just orange from the pH paper. Part B. E110 is sunset yellow. Outline a method you could use to show the presence of E110 in the food coloring. You may draw a diagram to help you answer the question. Alright, the names sound complicated, but in this question, you just need to find out how to identify a pure substance from a mixture. Well, the only way to do this is to use chromatography, so just basically describe its process. First, we gotta get a chromatography paper and put drops of food coloring on it at the baseline, draw with pencil. Then place it in a container with solvent which will dissolve the food coloring. Next, wait for the substances to travel across the paper and you'll see different spots produced from the initial drop. Finally, identify the substance by calculating RF value or by comparing the distance it traveled with the known sample. You may or may not draw a diagram, but I would recommend you to do so as you might get some points that you missed in your description. Okay, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped with your revision. Please subscribe, like, and comment for more videos like this. I would really appreciate all of those. Bye!